Hey everybody, Steph here, and I'm doing a little bit different heart video today. This one requires a few additional things, but it makes some of the most beautiful ocean hearts uh, you've ever seen, uh, and they're really popular. I had a whole pile of them made for my Kickstarter last year because people were requesting them. However, it does require something that you probably don't have in your house, or maybe you do, I don't know. But how many people usually stock copper oxide? Granted, uh, if you're a ceramicist, you might have it. Uh, it's a black powder. It looks like this. I'll have some more in a container. You can buy it from ceramic shops. You can buy it from some science supply stores. I have it in my Etsy store. This is a half an ounce. It's enough to let you know if you like playing with copper oxide. And if you do go buy a pound. But this is a nice little starter amount. It's only a few bucks. Shipping's free in the U.S. But we're moving on because it's not about that. To make these hearts, you're going to need to make two layers of glass to wedge the copper oxide in between so it will make bubbles. For the Firelight 7055 mold, what I have found works best is to cut yourself a two inch square and then, which you can't really see easily in here, is cut diagonally across it. I know, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You're like, Steph, that gives me a triangle, this is a heart, but bear with me, it makes sense. Take your cutters, cut your triangles in half. Obviously, they're not gonna fit. So take your nippers and cut at an angle to take both edges of the triangle off both points leaves you a sort of a wonky looking trapezoid or not trapezoid I don't know what this particular shape is called then what you want to do is take your nippers and take a little chunk out of the top because where it's sitting in here it will sit flatter if you do that in this case I need slightly more out of the top so there we go then you can do a similar thing to the to your top piece which is take the little wings off your triangle. Only this time you won't need to make a nip in the top because it sits higher, it won't interfere with this piece of the mold. So once you have all your pieces nipped or as many as you're gonna make, you need a small mixing container and your copper oxide. Now, this doesn't take much, I promise. This is a souvenir spoon that I picked up in a secondhand store. It is from the Redwood Highway. And I think it works great for most things in glass. But I'm going to take, oh, um, that much. And that will probably do six or seven hearts. It really doesn't take much. And then, I know some people just spray it on or powder it onto glass, but to me that's a pain in the butt. So I use a little glass tack. This is in a generic container. And I just plop some glass tack in. Honestly, you could do it with water, you could do it with aloe vera, you could do it with hairspray, just some sort of liquid. And what I'm going to do is grab myself a paintbrush and mix. See, it doesn't take long, and it leaves you this little container. And the nice thing is, once the container dries out, just add more glass tack or water, and it will come right back up. But see, now I've got itself, it's kind of a, a thick paste. So I take my bottom piece, which has the nip in the top, and I apply the copper oxide mixture. It doesn't need to be thick. Notice that you can see right through it. This will give you plenty of bubbles. But, I mean, if you want to try for it, you absolutely can layer it on thick. Um, nobody's stopping you. I'm not your mother. Uh, I did for some of them, but here's the catch with layering it on thick. Makes really big bubbles that want to break through the top of your hearts. And since your hearts are only being topped with one layer of glass, that can sometimes be a real pain in the butt. So, again, I wouldn't go much thicker than this. But again, also, not your mama. So once you have that layer done, and you wipe the copper oxide off your thumb, all you have to do is drop your other layer on top. I get mine to sit in there. Drop my other layer on top, and that will trap your bubbles. So you can see I've got two of these going, so I'll just, well, voila, and there they go. Now, you're like, well, that makes bubbles, but what are we going to do now? Here's where I get bullseye specific, and for that, I'm really sorry. 
but this is what I work with and how I found. I take fine medium amber frit and I put it in the very bottom of the mold. Now you don't have to, sometimes I don't, but what I do is fill the very bottom with fine medium amber because it looks like sand. And you've got that gap right there anyway because your glass won't fit perfectly. So I just put some medium amber in. And like I said, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But for these, we are. Then what I do is I take fine white for it. And this is just plain opal white. And I put it in the top of each corner at the top of the heart corner. Hearts don't have corners. The top of each heart in each lobe. This is like ocean spray. And if you've never played with bubbles, I promise you this black gunk turns out blue and turns out beautiful. But what I do is I just fill it in. And when you're doing this, remember to go higher than the level of the two pieces of glass you have because you are using glass that is ground and has air. And it will not fuse to the same level as it's coming in. You've got air pockets, it's going to settle down. And then if it's looking a little wonky, and oh crap, sorry, I didn't mean to bang that. Anyway, you can see where I've got gaps. The close match I found to this in Bullseye is Sea Blue, which is 1444. And I take that and I sprinkle it in spots just kind of to even it out so I don't have any lumpy sections. But yeah, it'll turn out. Now, it won't bubble, of course, but it's a real close match for the copper blue or the copper oxide. But I put that on either side just to make it look nice. Notice I've got it everywhere. So once I recap my sea blue. And jiggle this man, my camera work is top notch. I am gonna win awards. I just sort of push it out of the way. It's a transparent so the bubbles will show through. But that is all I do. And then what I'm gonna do off camera is fill out all the rest of these and make an entire tray of bubble hearts because I wanna sell them on Etsy and give them away. And then I will come back and show you the finished product. Okay, it's been a few days since I fired my hearts. I've been awfully busy, but now I have some time to finish this video up. And so let me show them to you. Honestly, they turned out really beautiful. I'm really pleased with them. Um, and I would be happy giving most any of these away. A couple of them need a bit more glass, so I'll probably do a second firing. The only catch with doing a second firing is that it will sometimes cause the bubbles to rise up, and so you will get more of a texture. Like, for example, this one has sort of a, a thin set of lobes. You can really feel where there's two layers here and not enough glass here. I don't know if you can see it from the side. So I will be refiring that, probably with just some clear on top to give it some more lift, or not lift, mass. But here's the first one we did turned out really beautiful. You can see the bit of sea, foam, sea blue on the edges, but again, it really does mesh with the copper nicely. Again, you don't have to do it. Um, one thing I will show that's not as obvious in this one, but it is in, say, this one, is notice the black or the dark blue. That is leftover copper oxide or, or not ore, powder that didn't oxidize fully. This is why you want to take a light hand with applying it. This is the one I did that was thicker uh, of the two samples and you can see here and here and up there where the uh, um, the copper oxide did not all uh, oxidize and become bubbles. But ultimately if you use a light hand with these they turn into really beautiful hearts. Um, last year when I gave a bunch to the ugly pups in Alaska I did a small bowl and it was like a four by four bowl and I painted it with the copper oxide and then I used frit like this around the edges only used a medium to give it more of a sea foam effect um, and the bowl and the hearts went over really well. So I highly recommend you give this a try and again if you don't feel like buying a quarter pound or a pound I offer little approximately half ounce containers in my Etsy shop. Um, or find somebody else who wants to go in with you and buy your quarter pound and split it. It's still not very expensive. Uh, thanks for, as always, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video. And if this video was of any use to you, I would appreciate a like or a subscribe. Have a good day.